all right okay i'm admitting the participants okay well good afternoon good evening and good morning uh, whichever part of the world that you're in today i welcome you all uh, into this wonderful webinar a masterclass that we've kept uh, for budding artists designers architects and whoever you may be or whatever you do it's a very interesting topic uh, that we have i have moderated uh, several webinars uh, during the last few months and and being a mass communication graduate i always feel that i'm a little tongue tied sometimes towards the end when asking questions or it's the speaker that i get tongue tied with the questions but it's the first time uh, you know i realized that it's a very thought provoking topic that we've just got on the start it is you know aesthetics cannot be taught let me go ahead and introduce our keynote speaker an artist and independent curator boss krishnamachari who lives and works between mumbai and kochi his diverse artistic and curatorial practice includes drawing painting sculpture design installation and architecture boss krishnamachari is the co-founder of the kochi biennale foundation is the organization behind initiation of india's first biennale the kochi muzeresh biennale which was started in 2012 which boss krishnamachari also co-moderated and co-curated he has served as the president and biennale director for the foundation till date and has overseen four successful editions of the biennale so far making it amongst the best and the biggest biennale is in asia we we'll eagerly look forward to an intriguing and thought provoking and engaging session for all the budding artists and designers boss krishnamachari will spill the beans on the aesthetics and its organic evolution in shaping creative thought process i also welcome the students of chitkara university and students and designers and artists from different parts of the world who join us here today i would request you to write in your questions at any point in time in the chat box which will soon open and towards the end of the session we will open the house for any question and answers if you'd like to speak on the mic do not hesitate to raise your hand on that note i would like to join you all in welcoming our speaker welcome sir thank you rajesh for inviting me to be part of this uh... Uh, let me share the screen and then right away we'll go on to the presentation uh, thank you so great. much again and for inviting me to be part of this chitkara series of uh, your universities uh, chitkara universities um, a series of webinar uh, thank you thank you again thank you sir i hope you can see this um, screen right yes sir it's full screen and it is perfect now yes sir all right so as our host mentioned you know aesthetic cannot be taught i believe that aesthetic cannot be taught i will try to share what i believe how it can be learned learned from you know life itself or through the through the slides so hope you know i have given this kind of presentation often so from so i think you know second time or third time uh, forgive me for you know this monotonous presentation but i try to make it little different this time including some more interesting uh, visuals uh, for your um, awareness i believe aesthetic cannot be taught i believe 
learning liberates art design sciences may create new world still i believe aesthetic cannot be taught in the art world it's always important to you know there are there are so many connecting dots in between art making or an artist to art institutions to all kinds of fields i mean when when you getting into a contemporary art world you you are happen to connect with other other aspects institutions definitely you need to if you would like to uh, study something you need to connect with institutions art institutions it's also with uh, designers it's also design architect institutions are important site for me you know like when i show this kala bhavana shanti niketan that institution the site itself is an important aspect um, i like the idea of you know growing within the landscape within the within the location itself the art institution set up in a kind of rural area you know it is conceptualized by one of the greatest uh, writer artist uh, rabindranath tagore and you know like consistently we we find great great artists coming from shanti niketan and the uh, the tutors and pedagogues like uh, late uh, kg subramanyam and many others you know when we when we uh, learn about art so i think it is important to have many many uh, as i mentioned here on libraries and cafes publications galleries curators collectors art residencies art fairs auction houses foundations museums festivals biennial triennial manifest uh, document uh, i will explain a little bit by uh, later i think you know one of the most important thing to um learn or create creating infrastructure is one of the most important thing if we really believe in culture if we believe in uh, a new world creating infrastructure for it is one of still it is aesthetic cannot be taught i think create infrastructure is most important thing there are infrastructure like museums and uh, um, there are you know just giving an example few examples from around the world we have national gallery of modern art algogenai museum in bilbao louvre in paris louvre in uh, abu dhabi is also an amazing uh, uh, you know great design by um i forgot in his name uh but it's it's a it's one of the greatest design and you can go on looking at you know museums in the, nowadays everybody is familiar about it you know but this is an interesting uh space it was a kind of uh, power station converted into a kind of a large scale almost like a 300000 little less than 400000 square feet of exhibition area designed by great architects Herzog and de Meuron this uh, Swiss architects designed this uh, um state modern and these these who have 5 million people so these institutions are the place you know we can we should have much more more and more institutions when we look at in india you know unfortunately we don't have contemporary art museums of course we have a lot of museums but unfortunately none of them except a few like chhatrapati vastu sangrahalaya and the national museum in delhi but still it is you know not good enough for contemporary art museum in jaipur house and other places in india but still we lack of it's almost like 1.3 billion people and then we have how many museums a contemporary art museum i don't see much museums are coming up other than you know few few in delhi and uh, in bangalore which i'll talk talk to you a little later this is after 5 million people visiting state modern i think you know this this is an extension it's also designed by herzog and um, demerot uh, so here it is little bit liberal educational and you know uh 
video, uh, those kind of all kinds of contemporary art practices that happens in this um, this annex building of the Tate Modern. This is an interesting uh, concept developed by a Chinese um, Chinese space, and I I feel I would you know it's in Nanjing Sifang Art Museum, and there are 24, 24, It's a curated museum site. You know, I was happened to visit this uh, wonderful site by taken and shown me around by this young collector, art collector. The idea is like uh, to bringing 24 great curated, um, you know, like uh, artists, like architects, like um, Ethora Sotsas, David RJ, you know, and, and building, you know, 24 buildings on one site itself is a kind of amazing location to travel and see. So uh, there's just a different perception, different way you can conceptualize uh, how the idea is originated, how you, you are creating a cultural center or a destination for uh, viewing architecture as well as art space. Um, in that sense, this is, uh, uh, this is an awesome project in China. Sorry, it's not, it's not working. Uh, so you want to minimize this? Uh, it's working now. Yeah. Um, this is in Inchuan, China, where I have curated a project, Extreme Men. You could see um, this uh, your Kowono's project, you know, 100, 100 coffin, you know, like uh, it's a family kind of coffin different sizes and and the and the trees are also planted in that project uh, when i was invited to curate a project in inchuan uh, you know it was inchuan biennial in 2016 um and i think you know i'm just showing here as a kind of you know like in 2011 i was reading an article in new york times it, it says that the report says that you know china is building almost a thousand museum um, of course, you know, how it is running is a different kind of question, uh, but this, this museum was 50,000 square feet itself. And it was, it's kind of, it's, it's in a beautiful place, very close to the Yellow River. And I could do a fantastic um, biennial project um, in 2016. In India, we have this uh, new museum, which was opened a year ago or a couple of years ago in, in, um, Bihar, a couple of years ago in Bihar. This is designed by Maki. It's, it's a really a huge museum. They spend about 117 crore to build this. This is because uh, one of the bureaucrats, the chief, um, uh, chief secretary and uh, uh, chief secretary was very much concerned and he created, he was very much interested in putting, up, uh, putting it together as an, uh, a great museum for the city with the state and this is how it has happened. So they spent five, 517 crore rupees to make this happen. But I'm not sure about the, you know, like when you have places like this, I was talking to um, Sabiasachi Mukherjee of the, uh, not the fashion designer, uh, he is the museum director of uh, uh, CSMBS in Mumbai. So he said that, you know, you, you need to uh, actually, you need to have at least uh, 600 people to work in this museum. It is, uh, you need to have experts and uh, I'm not sure how many experts they have, how many curatorial, um, you know, that structure, how it has been built up. I'm not sure about it, but this, they have an architecture space uh, for uh, exhibiting uh, contemporary as well as they are exhibiting, uh, you know, traditional, uh, their wealth of uh, uh, collection. Uh, in this museum. And it's one of my, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing a, a great project designed by Sir. Uh, you. David R.J. Kiran Nader got two museums now in Delhi and in Noida. One is in Delhi and Saket and the other one is in uh, Noida. But it is great to see you know, like people like that, 
sorry there is some um, so if you could click on remind me later it will disappear technical issues are there you know so yeah. let me um so this i'm looking forward to seeing um, you know uh, kiran nada museum we as i was mentioning to you uh, to all of you that you know like we we don't have much museums in in our 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 country um there's a museum coming next year now we have the best virtual museum is on uh, museum of art and photography in bangalore uh, started by young bright uh, um, a business uh, um, you know tricon uh, i would say that you know like abhishek padar is uh, created this museum for the public i think it is going to be a fantastic museum designed by uh, Nish, uh, somitra ghosh um, from bangalore it as as when i talk about aesthetic cannot be taught you know like there are lot of lot of temporary pavilions and binales helps to create awareness you know temporary pavilions and binales uh, aesthetic cannot be taught still i believe um this is a kind of opportunities to develop you know it's a small institution but it is like really really one of the best programmed institutions in the world i would say and 2020 you know 2200 one on words they have this pavilions uh, summer pavilions they've been uh, having it in uh, serpentine pavilion it's called serpentine summer pavilions every every year it is been temporarily designed by great architects and you know it's these pavilions go out in the character you have a cafeteria you have a performative space and reading spaces a cafe where you can spend good time or or a cultural space you can it's a kind of temporary cultural space for me a binale is also a temporality is the one of the most important aspect uh, that is why i was talking about the temporary temporary pavilion and also act as a kind of um, you know a cultural agent this is also designed by herzog and demaron and iwei Uh, this art artist from uh, china but he uh, no more lives in lives and works in china he's uh, he's been thrown out of china or he uh, never wants to go back to china that kind of situation he was a political um um critic of uh, chinese uh, institutions and uh, so this is part of a uh, uh, kochi Uh, Kochi Biennial Foundations Pavilion. We we make every other year a temporary pavilion for you know educational performative programs, talks, um, curated film series, and um, and cultural programs. Uh, this is the place. Uh, it was designed by Tony Joseph, an architect and uh, a member, a board member of the Kochi Biennial Foundation. i believe in science and art and design come together and you can make a uh, great great uh, pavilions and architectural spaces and things like that so, you know for me this is a sculpture for me and this is a pavilion but you know like uh, this science and art can be uh, come together in spaces it's also this temporary project and a pavilion uh, created and you know this was the pavilion which Uh, won the uh, you know golden lion award uh, in 2019 um, biennial it's it's one of the greatest biennials as you know in the first biennale was started in 1895 in venice and you know this is the pavilion you know they have two kinds of uh, sites one is the, the mainly curated exhibition project and the pavilions are built by or uh, executed and uh, projected by countries and here this was a lutenian pavilion and this was a temporary um sun and sea um beach was created um, and it was really a, a, an experiential one and you know this is this is a project was started by me in 2005 you know like when while i was studying there was no opportunity to get the great art magazines or books or you know like um, 
those kind of things. So then I have been collecting uh, DVDs, those period in DVDs and, you know, uh, its own art and architecture, design, fashion, photography, all that kind of thing. So around 3,000 books have been um, exhibited in this place. This gallery was also belongs to, you know, two of my other partners. You know, this gallery was called BMB, which, which was in Bombay in 2008, 9, 10. And uh, and I have exhibited this was a traveling show, these modular furniture. The traveling show was in, started in Mumbai at the Max Muller Bowen's gallery space, then went to Delhi, Kolkata, Bangalore, Chennai, <clears throat> not in, uh, sorry, Kochi and Baroda, etc. Um, this is now, it's, it's a permanent location. I don't like the permanency of it, but you know, like you, you are keep sorry about the bad slide. It's a, a place called Pepper House. Pepper House is also created by the Kochi Benale Foundation with the help of a couple of, uh, you know, supporter of the Biennial, Isaac and Chinky Alexander. They given it this space uh, free of, and uh, we have our Benale uh, as well as the uh, Pepper House residency takes place. There is a cafe and restaurant um, cafe and the, the the library and the the sites for art making and closer to the seaside. It's an awesome uh, residency, I would say. So this temporary library, you know, this can take uh, another level of, uh, you know, it can go to some other locations as well. You know, I was thinking of doing it as a kind of mobile library. Earlier days when I was a kid, I used to buy books from those uh, small van used to come and then they used to sell books. It's called Prabhat books. And I used to get the five rupees, 10 rupees to get to Mayakovsky and Tolstoy, all the Russian writings, and Pushkin onwards to everyone. So anyway, that's just a great experience. So I was thinking of creating it, but unfortunately I had to sell, sell it off that property for making the previous one of the Biennials in the first edition of the Binale of the Kochi uh, Binale. Um, so this the small fund I used it for, um, you know. So evoke awareness of creative world means I, for me, there are schools, there are many schools of thinking, schools of practices in the world, you know, like uh, uh, every, every art student, architecture students, and, uh, and the design students must be familiar about uh, uh, schools of practices and theories and things like that. So I, I believe that, you know, it's all interconnected. It's almost like a hybrid uh, site for everything. Architecture connected with art, architecture connected with the products, restoration, uh, you know, heritage, typography, graphics, all this is, you know, textiles. You need to know about the materials to make, you know, like make awareness about all kinds of materials, whichever field you are working with. Even if you are a writer, you need to know about the stories of all kinds of materials. You know, if you're writing great novel on certain site, you need to know what kind of uh, history belongs to that area, what kind of uh, uh, technology, what kind of um, materials used to make for architecture or, or even salts, you know, like all that kind of stuff, you know. So the sociological, um, you know, areas also needed to be connected. So I think it's all important to know about other art forms at the same time. Um, theater, as well as filmmaking, sound, music, everything is connected to each other. When we create a theater space, you need to know everything about the site, as well as the theory, as well as, you know, like what kind of theater is being happened in this art work, uh, you know. Um, the, so there are so many, so many theories, I'm just, or, or, or ideas, I would say impressionism was an idea or Fauvism was an idea, Dadaism, Fluxus, Futurism, you know, like some of them are consistent, you know, still relevant, you know, for example, Fluxus, you know, 1968 was, uh, you know, uh, sorry, um, that the Arte Povera, for example, 1968, it was started and, you know, like still it is relevant and many artists works with the uh, cheap material uh, or poor material, Arte Povera. And it's an Italian movement, but uh, you know, so many, so many contemporary artists 
really uh, experience those kind of uh, things and just just giving you an art artist artist plus architect city created designed by this federico babina this all posters created from the theories and practices of each and every artist he he uh, really studied gone through it the history and created architecture for artists artist architecture it's called art artist posters you know that's so it's kind of interesting series of posters he created you can google it and see um, federico babina is an italian um, architect and designer so one of the one of the studies he was saying you know like piet mondri and for me you know still uh, one of the greatest you know like modernism when i look at modernist architecture of fashion or art, art you know like the stigel his style was called stigel but you know that his his modernist um, way of working is actually there are so many process so many so many paintings he must have done in between this and this one and as the same artist created this uh, it's one of the greatest greatest uh, work in the contemporary art history or in modern art history uh, so the, in between this work the trunks become line lines become you know uh, you know and the, the the leaves become colors or you know like things like that so there is a kind of transformatory element you can see um, it's a kind of incredible learning of deleting incredible learning of editing incredible learning of making a uh, new ways of seeing and it's also interesting there is an anecdote when when he was painting something similar uh, that, like this work a line uh, someone visited his studio and uh, while he was painting she was watching this uh, and she asked him after many many times um, you know he was making a line for multiple times many times you are painting Uh, again and again and then this uh, this girl asked him why are you painting why are you making that line again and again so he said i'm stretching the line stretching that line so i think i it's a really really kind of a, um you know a really an important uh, you know enlightened um, statement i would say and i i think you know when we talk about a line you know people say that you know lines are built up of dots and things like that you know i believe a line is a line you know you know if you are a, if you are really a good artist if you if you if you are making a drawing you know the drawing is the line it's not dot you know like you know there is there won't be you know as an observer as an outsider i would say that you know Uh, putting it up with dots and you know dots also can make meaning but you know if you think that you're making a line with the dots i think it doesn't i i don't think it makes sense to me as a line is a line i would say um in the lack of confidence you know that the, the stippling with the dots you know some some artworks art makers have seen you know using you know i'm not talking about pointillism a theory Uh, it's not the thing i'm talking about i'm talking about how a dot become a line is i believe still a line is a line um, this is also a uh, federico babina inspired from uh, you know um, inspired from these works and uh, and there are so many people are inspired from so what i'm trying to say here is everything is interconnected that hybridity uh, needed to be looked at it interiors inspired from um, piet mondrian's work or modernist arc, you know even the modernist architecture you know you, we have a fantastic example in uh, in um, chandigarh and also in uh, you know he created a, a, a great house for uh, anand sarabhai in uh, ahmedabad so it um so he's also not a, not an arch- i mean he's a painter you know he's done lot of uh, you know fantastic carpet designed and furniture and the architecture so it's a kind of 
everybody every, you know he is almost like in the whole uh, i would say that the, it's a complete complete artist or a complete uh, you know um, a creative person who built so many incredible architecture and designs so every artwork every theory you know most of the you know especially this cubism is a kind of example of you know it's kind of it's a kind of assemblages of forms it's a, the two dimensionality how you can create three dimensional it's a kind of assembles of um, you know basic forms and textures and created uh, you know this still you know this is kind of maybe beginning of abstraction beginning of it can be uh, you know looked at it in that sense historically um and the role and the pop figure started as again the graphic designer also designed quite a lot of uh, you know shoes his, his job was designing shoes and you know like uh, also you know that's reflected in his uh, ways of working understanding popular art you know popular culture and creating pop art with contemporaries of him like uh, lichtenstein roy lichtenstein and others you know like uh, so the multiple images and um, and the the serigraphy become an important element or you know we call it the still screen printing and you know like a large scale and his studio was also known as a kind of place for all kinds of creative people musicians writers a uh, filmmaker so he's also made films and uh, you know collaborative works with uh, baskia and francesco clemente and others you know so these great artists and also he designed vinyl print uh, you know design um um you know album covers and um, and his famous statement is also still relevant i would say presently this 15 minutes become 15 seconds or something like that or 5 seconds you know when you look at the instagram or facebook reading i think you know people are you know everybody is become you know everyone will be world famous for 15 seconds i would say or 5 seconds keep hearing you know there are different schools of practices as i was mentioning this uh, graffiti this is a post graffiti uh, thing keep hearing it is actually inspired by the, the babina's poster it's not keep hearing's work it is inspired from keep hearing's work so keep hearing is done quite a lot of uh, uh, graffiti works on the street you know late nights and you know like uh, it's all, almost like uh, um so there are post graffiti works by jean michel basquiat age of 28 he passed away there are some incredible films were also made on him by his uh, uh, contemporaries and friends much check it out uh, graffiti started as a kind of sometimes it's like a political statement but later it become a kind of uh, some of them can look at it as a kind of mural work and you know, this is in the from the berlin wall um, this is one of the greatest uh, you know like this uh, Le uh, leonid uh, brechner and eric honek is hugging each other you know this kind of mural is been created in uh, the wall a uh, german wall and which was a, it's kind of really an interesting statement on that sense you know so the, uh, when i look at uh, this architectural or is cultural or minimalist to work you know this minimalism become expressionist as well you know richard serra is known for a minimalist uh, uh, art making but you know like there is a kind of the friendship in between richard serra and frank gary can be reflective in these kind of architecture you know frank gary's architecture this is uh, in los angeles the uh, concert hall create, um, built by designed by um, frank gary there is also this just the position of art and architecture is also interesting his friendship with other artists the like clay holdenberg there's so many projects have been done by clay holdenberg and frank gary together and also the materiality the material used for furniture making there the um, you know this corrugated paper and uh, gary himself is uh, you know it's this that kind of everything can be made by an artist an architect and a designer so nothing you don't need to leave out for learning and making it i think uh, that's uh, you know i was fortunate enough to meet him in 
Los Angeles during 1996 when I received an award to travel. You know, one of my, so my, during the travel, I have suggested, you know, like the, the USIS, one of the finest award, I would say that, you know, travel from Washington, Chicago, Atlanta, Santa Fe, and LA, and New York, you know, visiting great artists like Frank Stella, Francesco Clemente studio visit, uh, Joseph Cosset studio visit, all this has given me confidence you know, like all this, uh, you know, name dropping doesn't help. I think it is important to have conversations. I will talk about conversations, how it is important in, you know, art, your career building. Um, so Judd is uh, another great minimalist. When I was talking about uh, uh, Frank Stella, another, you know, there are so many minimalists in that period of, you know, when we look at US artists, you know, most of them were, you know, um, really contrasted to the European painters, you know, especially German painters. They were very much expressionistic and, you know, like, uh, and uh, American artists, you know, like uh, they've been talking about their practices are, you know, there are reasons, you know, somebody says that there are political reasons they created something like that. There is, uh, how come there are so many minimalistic or abstract painters that come from um, American art world? Um, so this is judge under the work. Um, you know, when I look at fashion, you know, Isamiyaki is considered to be one of the greatest uh, designer from uh, Japan, but inspired from Asian colors and, you know, and, but, you know, his pleats making, when we look at his uh, designs, you know, like I've seen some of his um, designs, the watch he designed for MoMA, MoMA shop, you know, you could find uh, there are museum shops have, you know, Frank Gehry designs, the pen, things like that. Here, anyway, when I'm talking about Isamiyaki, his pleats are very important, you know, when I look at a lot of his uh, work, you know, this is almost like a performative sculpture, you know, like the, the pleats are all, you must, you must be really uh, familiar with the uh, um, Miyake's uh, work. And in, I, I feel this inspirations are also all related fields, you know, it can be inspired. And there are so many examples, you know, like uh, uh, when I look at uh, um, Isimiyake's work and historically, when I look at um, Zaha Hadid's work, you know, Zaha is inspired from um, Isimiyake's pleats. So it's a kind of depth. And Zaha is also a great sculptor. And she is also uh, known as one of the uh, greatest architects. And, uh, and they design lots of furniture as well. So it's kind of artist, architect, designer, you know, um, a totally, totally um, a great uh, art makers in this world. And uh, this, is, this is Anish Kapoor. Anish Kapoor is, uh, was born in India. When he was 13 years old, he left India and lived in UK. One of the greatest uh, living um, artists, sculptor, uh, and public sculptures. He's quite uh, famous for his work. And this was in, in June when I invited him to do a project. This was a kinetic sculpture created for the 60 feet um, false walls created. I mean, this, this uh, I would like the architecture students to look at it, how it has been done, the architecture, the lighting, how it has been used, or the false walls created. It's not a permanent wall, you know, like that's the, that's the kind of fluid nature um, architecture has it, you know, like interiors can be used, you know. So most of the interiors, you know, in, in India, I would say that, you know, like unfortunately, we, we create the permanent walls, you know, then, and, the, and the museums never allow you to touch on the permanent wall. And I think, you know, that, that how you can create a space, a larger space without, without too many walls and how you can create in case with a few, few walls and, you know, like how you can create a fluid architecture within the space itself. It will be a kind of interesting thinking for the future architectural uh, museum spaces or gallery spaces, you know, like there are some interesting um, uh, galleries, you know, for example, uh, Kemol Prescott always keep changing the interior spaces with, uh, um, you know, ankles and, you know, so it depends on, uh, it's also interesting that artists, how 
related to architects, how artists, how related to interior spaces. I think it should start from home, you know, that the home and then gallery spaces or museum spaces or outer spaces, all this is all interconnected, you know, understanding design and things like that. Anish Kapoor created this fantastic work, a whirlpool kind of place created on the site of Kochi, Kochi Musis Benali is one of the sites. And it is just supposed to be the seaside, you know, the curator taken such an, um, curator was uh, Judith Kalat. He, he uh, put this work uh, on the site of, uh, you know, seashore. It is, it's amazing how this juxtaposition and this whirlpool, this was the first work he created and then later larger scale projects outside cities, outside open spaces also he created in France and many other places. Uh, when when I look at this Aran Saroyans, you know, this is uh, Guinness Book record, you know, the smallest two poems in the world and created by this poet, amazing poet. He was also part of the Kochimusis Ben Ali's project when Jiddish uh, curated the project, you know, this uh, uh, this is from uh, Aspen Wall House of uh, the Kochi Musis Ben Ali 2014. And the text, when I talk about text, you know, artists, use lots of text. Here it is feminist uh, artist Guerrilla Girls who were part of last year's, last editions of the Kochi Muslims Benale. They also performed in Kochi. Do women have to be naked to get into the Met Museum, Met means Metropolitan Museum. So they are the critique, critique of the um, institutions, how um, feminists work uh, differently. In, uh, there's a kind of subtleness, there is a kind of humor at the same time, the factual facts uh, also put you, uh, put it towards your face. Barbara Kruger, you know, used by, you know, so the site, you know, the spaces can be different, you know, so, our, you know, here it is a mobile, mobile, you know, space um, become an art space and again, your body is a battleground. Is another, she's another brilliant, uh, um, brilliant artist. Uh, protect me from what I want. This is uh, this. I have seen so many T-shirts uh, created from this text to me uh, created by um, uh, Jenny Holzer. Uh, one of the one of the I would say one of the strongest uh, political uh, statements. Her works are quite interesting statements created by, um, written by this artist, Jenny Holzer, on, you know, different kind of technology, time to time, things were being changed in some places. This has been projected, huge scale projections on the Guggenheim museums. And, you know, this is recent, recent, uh, during the time of the, uh, you know, Trump, um, the American, American election period, she created this work. And this, this work is uh, done by Robert Montgomery for Kochi Musis Benali. And the same artist created a fantastic work for Yin John Bainil when I curated, when I invited him to, um, to make a work. Uh, this is in, in Chuan in China. Um, this is one of my favorite artists uh, or a poet, a Chilean poet, uh, when uh, Sudarshan Shetty curated this. You know, you can see a four minutes video created by the Kochi Binale Foundation video lab by the young, young, uh, young filmmakers or video artists. I would say that it's one of the finest uh, Raul Zurita four minutes video. You should check it out in, in, uh, in uh, you know, YouTube. Uh, Raul Zurita, Sea of Pain, created by Sudarshan Shetty for the Kochi Musis Binale in 2016. And I'm not going through the history of it, how it has been created, why it, it was created. So the site is converted into kind of uh, um, first I'm showing a she's almost like an anti-war all of 20th century, end of 20th century British art. I would, you know, like uh, anti-war all how he was in 80s, in uh, uh, 70s and 80s, how he was in New York. And you know, uh, Andy Warhol, uh, sorry, Demin Hurst created you know 15 years or 20 years of um, you know British history was you know 20th century, um, end of 20th century British art was you know inspired or created by people like him. 
and his tutor and uh, mentor, um, Craig Martin, uh, Professor Craig Martin, and her and you know contemporaries. You know he was really, you know, created a world for young practitioners. While he was a student, he created a, a, a show called the Footies, and which was really got the critical acclaim. And then um, he, he's a prolific artist. Done what not he's also created his own museum his uh, he himself you know um, uh, created uh, many many examples you can see and there is a kind of participatory uh, there's a kind of uh, you know the idea has become art you know this has been painted by maybe uh, hundreds of other other artists uh, come together and work and it's spin spin painting you know like uh, it's a kind of 360 degree spin painting created by him. And also there are butterfly works, there is coral works, which was shown in Venice, uh, the entire um, uh, museum, one of the museums in um, Venice. So this is the kind of uh, Damien Hirst's uh, wallpapers in a way. Uh, it's inspired from, of, uh, it's a kind of transferred to uh, you know, butterflies being used to make these artworks in fashion, you know, like Pepe and other other fashion brands used his work for um, making it happen. Uh, so Ernesto Neto is also another, I would, I, I see him as a kind of performer, I see him as a kind of spiritual person, I see him as a, as a kind of sculptor, an architect, a fluid architecture, you can say that, you know, it's almost like kind of a, a shamanistic understanding and his performances are also inspired from people. Uh, he's from Brazil and he lives with, uh, um, you know, and also come, uh, he really believes in Buddhism and, you know, when he created some works for Kochi, um, you know, walking around in Kochi itself, it was a kind of for us, it was one of the most interesting moments when we had invited him to be part of the Kochi Finale 2012. So that's materials used for these works, and also that's how how it has been. And as uh, you know, when when the companies Nike or uh, invited him to design, so this can be you know it's all inspirations from something like this being built up. Um, Babina's poster and another minimalist, but you know, he used science and natural lights to make this awesome um, project. Um, James Turrell. James Turrell worked with uh, many architects, like uh, another minimalist uh, architect, uh, like um, um, Tadawanto and other figures. Um, so it's, it's the pavilion in a way that is it a pavilion, is it a sculpture, is it an installation, you know, so this is Philip Beasley, an architect who's uh, built this uh, sensor using a lot of sensors and materiality in these kind of uh, architectural uh, projects. Technology, sci science and technology, science, art, design is going hand uh, hand in hand, so that that's kind of it's almost like they created some kind of um, uh, clay sculptures. You know, I would say that you know, this kind of natural um, uh, spaces. Another interesting, you know, artist, the young artist, is Thomas Saracento. In almost every Binali is part of it, but you know, this man lives with the spiders and created. Uh, you know, I when I look at his installation and sculptures um, uh, he's the designer you know like uh, even even this uh, spiders are great designers you know like I would say um, so many amazing amazing structural elements you can see so many installation ele elements you can see or assemblages you could see it in a, a spider's work but he he uses or you know his tools are in a way or his workers are actually the, the spiders and he lives with these uh, spiders and created these kind of amazing works, Saracento. And you know, in the art world, there are 
performance art, you know, this, these two figures, you know, recently, Uli passed, in my knowledge, and Marina Abramovic, one of the greatest, uh, uh, greatest performance artists. They separated in between, and uh, Marina Abramovic uh, created many, many projects, you know, like a person to go through. I mean, he, she, uh, both of them uh, visit Kerala. That is what my, I, you know, one of my friends mentioned to me that, you know, Ule, uh, he had met him in Kerala because he, he believes in, you know, Ayurveda and, uh, you know, that spiritual, uh, spiritual in the sense of, uh, you know, minimalistic way of ways of living. Uh, through Ayurveda exercises and experiences. Aki Sasamoto, a performing artist, you know, so I'm just showing you some performance artist names, which was part of the Kuchi Bainil. And this is also a collective artist, musicians, uh, you know, they made large scale prints and performed over the, you know, like this, uh, um, carved wood and then they performed and created a large scale um, um, assemblage or a, or a canvas for the Kuchi Bainer. They also make fantastic works, you know, it's a um, collective from Malaysia. Um, and this is Vibin Danudharan, an, an artist from Kerala who created this work, uh, you know, it's a, it's a late social reformers Sahodar and Ayyappan, who had famously put together a community feast to bring people of all castes together in 1970. I, I think, you know, this work, it's relevant is that, you know, coming together, you know, we talk about secular, you know, fabric, you know, this is one of the finest example of that in that context. And it's a critique of our time, you know, like you can see mostly in North Indian side, what is happening, you know, in the in the name of a skin, the, in the name of, um, you know, caste and creed, um, how people have been treated, unfortunately. Um, so it's all political. So how, you know, so, so I think you know, it is to be learned. Justin Ponmani is one of his performance in uh, Inchuan in China in 2016. So the performance art has been going on for, you know, years and years. So there's only a little bit of difference in between a theater performance or a performance art I mean, outside or a public space or, you know, or a site itself. You know, there's a, there are so many uh, great examples from India itself. You know, there's uh, artists listen in Goa. Um, I'm sorry, my friend's name is not coming to my mind. <laughs> You know, but uh, someone no, can, okay. yeah. Okay. I, you know, I, I think, you know, people adapt uh, culture, you know, when you have something um, spectacular, something sensitive, not necessarily always uh, spectacular, something uh, engaging, participatory, uh, people will slowly adapt. So we need to create a site, we need to have public spaces, we need to have uh, that kind of uh, understanding, then we can create something like that. You know, this is, uh, you know, like uh, this great architect, this Franco Gary designed for, uh, sculpted for uh, the Olympic Stadium in 1989, sorry, 1992. Uh, it's, a, it's a sculpture. It is, uh, you know, an architect made a sculpture on a public space in a way that it's a stadium itself made that kind of stage. Nuru Karim is, uh, is he himself believes that art he is an artist, and uh, this is sculpted for in for, in Mumbai. And you know, right side what you see is uh, um, bookworm is uh, uh, it's a kind of participatory installation created, temporary installation created for. And the left side is uh, Tata's uh, Tata's funded this uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, it's inspired from Gandhi, Gandhi's philosophy and Charka, uh, Nuru created this culture in, uh, in, in uh, Mumbai city. This is, uh, sorry about this pixelated uh, image, but this sculpture is a steel sculpture, a public participatory uh, sculpture. And you know, the public enjoy taking selfies, you know, like we've been talking about selfies. I think one of the first selfies 
maker maybe Anji Warhol. He's been taken a lot of his uh, photographs. When we look at his work, you know, um, Polaroid pictures, you know, like he is uh, he's a figure, I think I cannot, as an artist, I, I cannot forget in the history. And it, here it is, this in 2011, you know, there was a report that says that, you know, this is the most photographed uh, um, public work in the world, public sculpture or public monument in the world, not Eiffel Tower or Taj Mahal. So that's that's the kind of thing. It's in the Millennium Park in uh, Chicago, and uh, uh, this there are three. Uh, there is next next to space. There is Jean Plantin's work is also there, and then um, Frank Gehry also designed an open air theater space. This uh, uh, this is an architect artist artist. You know, Ola for Eliasen's company. You know, it's now like uh, architectural firms and designers, um, all kinds of creative people uh, come together to make an architecture, isn't it? The same way uh, Ola for Eliasen's, um, you know, studio makes uh, so many projects, new projects with architecture, new projects for BMW. I you know he was one of the BMW um, art. Uh, art car maker and you know that's that's a really a kind of critical work he created for bmw the same way you know the architectural space has been created by olaf for elias and he's uh, he's an artist first and then become an architect with the help of others you know i this is my personal uh, reading of philosophy personally i created or learned it from my life itself extremities coexist or extremities can be just opposed or extremity can be visible seen in my life. As when I look at, uh, you know, in, as a Keralaite, you know, I was in, born in Kerala, when I look at Italy and Italy and Puttu, it's, it's a very minimalistic thing, but at the same time, uh, a sadhya, you know, or, organized for Onam or Vishu, uh, I would say that it's kind of almost like an extremity sign the side of the uh, the food food culture the same way the costumes of a of a performer or a theyam performer or a kadagali performer is a ma maximalist or the, the expressions of um, uh, of uh, of uh, um mohini player is extremist but you know like the costumes are with lots of pleats uh, come from the minimalistic manner it's years and years ago, it has been maybe 200 years ago, it has been designed and still it is. And I could see that relatively in my life and outside and as well as inside, I could see that extremities coexisting and usages of colors in architecture and all those things are, you can see. So this is Kashmir Malevich, you know, in the historical term, it just comes from the constructivism side but you know like this black making a black square is a kind of statement you know one of the greatest statement you know he may be not looked at it as looked at it as a minimalist art, uh, artwork but i i feel in the contemporary terms i would like to look at it like that i've been using braille as a kind of language in my work uh, darkness or closing my eyes or you know so from that to darkness I created or I brings light into it, you know. So uh, how it's kind of darkness carries light. Tamas Soma Jodirgamaya, Tamas darkness carries light within it. So uh, being blind or becoming, you know, that's an interesting aspect, the minus plus, it, uh, minus equal to plus. Um, this has been used in a smaller scale, scale as well as larger scale. Uh, this is uh, created with the wood and painted wood uh, on, you know, this was a show in uh, in one by one gallery in Dubai. And when I look at architecture, like the Garage Museum in Moscow, it's a kind of the gallery within the museum itself. Inside the museum is a kind of contrast to outside of the museum. Outside the museum is minimalistic. Inside it's in a way the, through the artworks or through the bookshops and others you know like there is a kind of i'm not saying there is a chaos but there is an order within that chaos itself so this uh, this has been showing these installations or 
this great uh, architecture by the sana the japanese architects made this minimalistic work in bauri in uh, in new york um, so it's kind of bauri's you know clustered building in between there is the minimalistic architecture place so it's kind of great great learning of site in that sense i would like to tell this is alexander mcqueen he committed suicide few years ago and greatest uh, of british fashion when we talk about it you know this i look at it as a kind of surrealist work or you know he's done different kinds of work this is kind of surrealism or it's a kind of expressionism or maximalism we can see it in this these works i'm not a fashion critic or but i i see it as reading as a person i read it like this you know manish arora's work is the maximalist use maximum fluorescent as well as all kinds of colors and created forms um textures etc the same you know pina bosch's this work is the complete artwork um when i look at this performance artist from germany passed away a few years ago fortunately met her um you know um with the my friend talvin singh a musician a mercury award winner from india lives and works in london this you know like uh, when i looked at pina bosch's work you know pina also worked with the chandralekha when you know about chandralekha's practice from chennai and this this uh, national figure you know like a really great great performer performance artist from um, germany uh, I learned what I learned when I was a student, looking at her performance in Bob Auditorium in Bombay. Everything is on the stage, you know. Even the it's almost like a moments to moments, you know. The magically they expanded, you know, the lighting of the place, and almost sixty people been performing, and everybody moves around, and you know, like uh, there's a kind of minimalism, the same time maximalism, all kinds of art, you know, come on stage to perform. in this uh, this pina bosch's work there is also film i think made by wim wenders wim wenders a great film maker so must check it out pina and this is gary hill uh, known as a father of video art or you know like uh, this there are 36 cameras and 36 uh, interactive projections in this uh, this uh, wonderful space uh, created for the kochi uh, you know this is the lalit kala academy space and this work was done in 2016 for sudarshan shetty's uh, curated project this uh, this uh, i'm showing this in my personal work in the last 10 years i've been in 2010 i've done a large show after many many uh, years in a way um, so this kind of i mean i was using the language of maximalism and uh, creating a sanctum sanctorum uh, the entire space is uh, designed like this is one of the work which has nine nine rasas kind of thing it is not rasas it actually uh, it's people's obsession what is obsession i used a certain text in this work you know the text like a god text like religion and we we are all obsessed by it you know there's a kind of maximalize we are really obsessed obsession equal to maximalism i could say that you know like you will become blind in some ways that you know religion is actually religion and god in the name of these things uh, and the same way i see technology also people are getting into technological obsession and uh, this become i can go on talking about it but you know let's jump into other spaces and uh, this just opposition is very clear in this work in you know, a life living plants living plants and the, um, you know this just opposition of architecture you know this uh, sarsog and demoron two architects have been saying it from the beginning and uh, and uh, this vertical garden patrick blanc a, um, a french um, a biologist who uh, visited kochi as well we invited him to give a talk uh, during the time of um, um, you know, this kalat uh, curatorial time and um, Uh, he was talking about you know like these species around the 200 species um, of plants are kept on this ever living um, architecture so then uh, and the left hand side you know like there are rusted perforated uh, architectural element on a, a heritage kind of building and you know the right side this live so this this is a awesome 
just to position in you know it's, it's almost like next door to prada museum prado museum in madrid kites of forum you know how we can aesthetic cannot be taught still i believe aesthetic cannot be taught but it could be imbibed to build the festival build the festivals you know build small festivals um small celebrations of knowledge celebrations of uh, ideas kochi binale foundation created kochi musri binale in 2012 it's a it's a festival it is a festival of knowledge festival of um a non commercial uh, you know so there is a difference in between a festival of art fair and festival of binale binale doesn't you know we look for the new new ways of seeing and the way, you know art is being created uh, uh, cutting edge art practices made by all kinds of uh, creative people i'll show you a small video if it works i don't know it depends on kind of the festival called uh, in 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 um a european binale called manifesta this actually this we still got cut off but i'm sorry it's from uh, manifesta is a european binale which uh, moves from one city to the another you know like the last one was in france this was in zurich and uh, so this this in every five years there is a there is a, a it's called the documenta takes place in castel last edition of the uh, so i think the volume is gone a little low if i could ask you to okay. can you can you hear me yeah it's uh, slightly better yes yeah so yeah this is good yeah okay so uh, this is a documenta every 5 years it takes place in can you hear me no Yeah, okay um so i'm not talking about the artwork here but you know like it is important to you know see these festivals how you know like almost 900000 people visited visit such such festival festivals you know so in three months period of time uh, in it's in germany uh, we are all looking forward to the next edition curated by um, rangruba you know it's a uh, indonesian group of uh, curators you know so we are uh, we are all looking forward to such such festivals in india we we have other festivals as well you know please i cannot put everybody but in a chennai photo festival chennai photo festival is uh, is they are, you know only um, you know started few years ago but it's going extremely well the same way you know serendipity art festival in goa and then then in jaipur literature festival then um, you know the international film festival of kerala now also there is in goa there is mami in uh, 
uh, in Bombay, you know, these festivals are important to cultivate, create um, action in in our site, in our 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 society. Information is not knowledge. This I've been saying it uh, with Albert Einstein's quote, but aesthetics cannot be taught. You can. I think you know, information. I've given you so much of information. Einstein also said that information is not knowledge. Knowledge is the talent of a student. You know, I am talking to design students. I am talking to architecture students. I am talking to artists. I think you know these information. You know, that's a social awareness, political consciousness. All things are important to create new world. Um, this is an interesting statement. The act of drinking beer with the friends is the highest form of art. This. Uh, I met him in uh, during the time of my that award uh, in 1996. Tom Marioni on the right side. Tom Marioni is known as a conceptual artist. He his his conceptual side is home. His friends, his friends will come on every Wednesday, every other Wednesday or something, and bring with a bottle of beer. And uh, he created. Um, beer bottles, installations, and things like that. But you know, the, the context is what I'm saying is that it is important to have conversation spaces. Why, what I am today, or who I am today, is because of because of a lot of my uh, conversations with uh, many great minds um, from Mumbai, like um, Akbar Padamsi, Lakshman Sreshta, Dr. Giv Pachel. Um, or listening to them, being with them, Lakshman Sista, sitting with them, you know, Prabhakar Kulti, um, visiting his studio, you know, visiting, um, you know, my young young contemporaries, Jitish Kallat, you know, Justin Punmani, you know, all those those people are important for me, you know, Sudeshan Shetty, living with uh, at his studio, so that's conversations. I may not really always have the uh, the the capacity to have conversation, but I used to be a listener of the young as well as the older generation of great minds. Now, uh, one of my friends said each one is by university by themselves, you know, so it's kind of, I met a lot of, I have lots of universities besides me. So I found it, I think, and I would suggest all these young people to meet other great minds and next to door. Um, you know, we sit here to places, you know, we used to have a fantastic small place called Mohile Parek Center for Visual Art in uh, Tata Theatre, you know, these kind of places. And also, there are many, I am not getting the names, but, you know, the conversation spaces always create, uh, create a thinking. Um, your... uh, sir, Calcutta has something which is called Adda, like people get together Adda. in Adda. Oh, yeah, we also say Adda, but you know, like uh, uh, my home was in Adda for many, many youngsters as well as senior artists. I used to bring them, and I never called it by name. Okay, so that's that was the only difference. Um, this this is an interesting statement. You know, like this is my perception as well. You know, a book read by a thousand different people is a thousand different books. You know, now I don't know how many people are listening to me. And how many people are watching? Everyone's perception, maybe uh, the my visual presentation is seen by so and so would be the uh, different um, visual presentations for each and everyone. So I think you know the perception is up to how we develop ourselves, and you know how. So aesthetics still aesthetic cannot be taught. I would say that you know you can provide uh, situations, you can provide uh, sites for it, you can. Uh, provide and there, there are a lot of inspirations again you get it through books and magazines and you know um, great magazines like art forum or eflux so there are a lot of eflux um, writings you should find on re you know like political as well as socially relevant write-ups and freeze magazine all these critical reviews you can check it out in these magazine toilet paper created by an artist and the platform from Delhi Art India in India, Art Review Magazine uh, published from UK, and uh, also they have Asia um, publication. So, so, so many, you know, October is a kind of intellectual magazine, it's kind of academics. Uh, if you are in, really interested in academic writings, you know, the same way, EFLEX also brings out something like that in October. There, then, 
Okula, there are so many others, you know, have been put everyone, every, every magazine's names here. I feel this, uh, this is a great statement by oral writing, you know, like I was talking about showing you text-based artwork, you know, Bob and Roberta Smith create a text-based work, but this is all our schools should be art schools. So this is a great, great learning. I think, you know, it's a kind of liberal, you know, be like a child or be yeah, or liberal way of looking at things. I think uh, that's what it is mentioning. But, you know, I think uh, I, I say that, you know, daily reading, daily practices, daily uh, conversations, daily writings, uh, and even daily sketching and painting or sculpting takes you to, takes you to uh, next level. Still, art cannot be taught, you know, um, aesthetic cannot be taught. Nothing exists in this world without reason. I believe that nothing exists in this world without a reason. Still, aesthetics cannot be taught. It could be imbibed, it could be learned, you know, but it cannot be taught. Um, thank you so much. So I, I think the message that has gone on to gone out to the students in a very subtle way put across by you. Uh, we, we talked about books, we talked about films, we talked about fashion, architecture, performance art, paintings, museums, uh, and the culmination of everything. I, I think uh, this, is, this cannot be better juxtaposition that we being an educational entity, we try to teach all the time. And here we are talking to a gentleman who's saying that aesthetics cannot be taught. I think the message goes out loud and clear in a very subtle way. Uh, I, I will now open the house uh, for questions. Uh, I think we have some people who've already written some questions. So I would request Mona Biswarupa to go first. Mona, are you there? I'm going to unmute you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, Ms. Rajesh. Yes, I'm here. OK, please introduce yourself and then fire away your question. Uh, sir, um, uh, my name is Mona Bitswadupa. I'm uh, a I was a designer for 15 years. Then uh, my job, and uh, I started painting now full time. And uh, it was really nice listening to um, both sir's um, talk. It was really insightful, and uh, it was really enriching as well. So um, my question is, uh, you know, like uh, like Sir said, uh, aesthetic cannot be taught. You you have to be a gatherer. You have to you know like collect it drop by drop. It cannot be spoon fed to you. So um, you um, as we advance in life, uh, as your our experience in life and our practice deepens, our perception of aesthetic also changes. So uh, when I look back at some of my old works that I have, uh, I was really proud of the first. I don't uh, find them pleasing anymore. You know, how does an artist deal with this dilemma? Do you still own up to that work or abandon it, destroy it, change it, uh, or do you just live with, um, you know, how do you deal with um, uh, with the situation when uh, sold to um, an art uh, collector? So uh, this is my question. I, I, I you know, personally, yeah, I, I can only but personally, uh, you know, personally, I don't like to look at, look back uh, to my my creative uh, journey. And <laughs> the, the, even I don't have much uh, great visuals of my my time. I have been archived. I've been saying uh, to all my contemporary young people, you know, archive, you know, properly photograph it, properly, you know, those period of time we used to make slides. Nowadays, you have the digital camera, your camera, your phone itself can um, actually, you, you don't need anything else. You can uh, record everything in front of you. But I think, you know, like uh, as personally, I don't look back to my creative, um, you know, it's a kind of, uh, I would say a step ahead. I, you know, you don't need to, I, you know, your memories, you don't need to go back. It is there within yourself, you know, you, you expand yourself, you transform yourself to something else. You know, this kind of transformation needs to happen. For that reason, you need to build so many uh, things I have so I mentioned. It will give you confidence from uh, what is past. You know, you can erase the past ones also. There are 
historically some artists erased their earlier works and you know created new work you know you can erasing means you can also add in some ways you know like when you look at jackson pollock you know pouring out colors and colors it's in some ways he is erasing past in some ways he is adding on to it and you know it's complete is abstraction with the many many forms and textures and colors and you know there is you know people say there is no composition but it's kind of it is a kind of organically developed or organically created uh, painting but the basically we you know in contemporary time we uh, we have to uh, crystal clear or you know clear like a mirror um you be uh, you know the ideas are very important to build your new works so keep working i i say kept in the in between i said that you know keep reading keep uh, keep working uh, that process of making things will take you to the next level but you have to find your you there is nobody else can you know you are the boss of your life uh, so i would say that you create your world and uh, you know in all conversations are uh, your you know important with your colleagues friends you know conversations through conversations you learn something and you know through painting you erase something i think you know erasing past is also to build for the future i uh, learn from that past as well and i i can only give it some contradictory statement in this period of time you know sometimes i you say that you know, the wealth of past is important to build for you know to stand today and for tomorrow but at the same time i would say that you know don't carry on with all the baggage is all the knowledge you know like you how do you invent invent is almost like eureka you you have to give surprises you know then you can say that you know you done you made news or you news means new news okay um the same way you are creating uh, you know don't be like a magician magicians are never happy you know i think you know they know the tricks you know don't be don't learn tricks you know create create uh, magic create magic is important don't be a magician thank you thank you sir uh, well said uh, the idea is to surprise yourself consistently uh, to all the young students you should make a lot of notes because uh, i know there are a lot of senior people there as well but uh, all the young students especially who've been studying all this while through the pandemic uh, uh, these are some interesting points uh i know you would had not had an opportunity to experience this but this is this is great and please make note of it i'll i'll uh, quickly invite the next person to ask a question uh we have shanvika shanvika patel who wants to ask a question shanvika are you there with us hello sir hello uh, sir this is shanvika patel i am an art student uh So this talk was really very deep and uh, insightful, and uh, my question is: uh, What is the role of artist residencies in connecting contemporary art world, and what's the future of it? Thank art you, sir. Art residencies. Yes. There are different kinds of residencies, uh, Miss Patel. Um, you know, there are writers' residency, there are performance residency, there are uh you know art residencies so uh, i am talking about uh, uh, artist residencies uh, artist for visual you artists need, you don't need to differentiate you know there are there are so mm. many so many res residencies around the world i think you know when i was talking about all aspects of creative industry uh, i don't know whether the word is right in industry creative industry i think you know like uh, coming together is a collective collective spaces you have opportunities for more and more um, conversation spaces you know you should look at you know there is a fantastic residency it's called the coach in delhi there is a great place in mumbai called the uh, anwan eight space there is a, a another space in baroda um, um, there are a couple of places in baroda and there are there is pepper house residency coach so it depends on programming of each each residency and there is another residency in um, can you hear me this yes uh, yes sir you are very audible so that um this kind of some disturbance i could hear that i am saying um 
in UK, there is a Delfina Foundation. It's curatorially, how it is being programmed, please check it out, you know, Delfina Foundation or in you know, a Pepper House residency. You look at each residencies and to make out what is important for you. For you. How uh, you take opportunities. As a young person, you should jump into, if you get an opportunity to visit, uh, residency that make use of it. And while I was a student, uh, it wasn't called residency, but I was I visited in uh, visited Bharat Bhavan, Bhopal uh, in 80s, 89 or something like that, when uh, Swaminathan was teaching. Uh, Swaminathan was there, you know, he was the head of Bharat Bhavan. And uh, great moments, you know, having conversation. That's the time. By chance, I met. Uh, um, you know, the gallerist, uh, Kemal family, um, uh, Gandhi family, I met met them met them there, you know, Keiko Gandhi to Shirin Gandhi to his, her mother. So the, those, I think, you know, chance, this this will happen to you. There are, you know, the, the moments if you're passionate about it, you, you are passionate about art, you are enthusiastic about your learning um, spaces, then things will happen to you on your path, you know. So I think, you know, this keep that passion and enthusiasm and creative mind in the same way, uh, you know, look for opportunities. Opportunities in the sense, you know, you know, there are so many um, nowadays, you can see it in social media. Um, uh, look at uh, how 118 is working, how Pepper House is working, other institutions are working. Yeah, there are so many. There is a, also a book. I've forgotten the name of the book. Internationally, there are French. Uh, there is a book uh, in English published by some French uh, residency people. Uh, so, so many opportunities are there. Please find that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think we should thank uh, thank the gods because, uh, to the surprise of the participants. Uh, as a young boy, uh, post Krishnamachari ji, you know, he wanted to be a study a science. I think he wanted to be a science student, sir. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. To do medical, medical science. Yes, he wanted to. So <laughs> we should be thankful that he met some interesting people and pursued art. So, and and that brings me to the next question uh, that somebody wanted to ask here. Uh, I, I don't see him anymore. Just a moment. Uh, Okay, I don't see him online anymore, but anyway, I'll read out the question on his behalf. Uh, if, uh... Okay, so Rakesh Kumar Chaudhary has asked, Dear Sir, all the creative art form and tools, but how a budding artist decide the medium for his and her artwork according to contemporary art? So how does one choose? That's the question from Rakesh Kumar Chaudhary. It's, uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. You know, that, uh, what is a tool? You know, tool is a medium. Medium is, uh, you know, like the, how you handle that medium is important. You know, film is a medium, right? Film is a medium, or painting is a medium. Sculpting is a sculpture is a medium. And within the sculpture itself, there are mediums. Within the sculpture, you know, like one of my friends makes with incense, you know, like use a fragrance within the material itself. So learning materiality for sculpting is important, you know, like the research on, you know, for example, this painter called Sanya Goyal, she's also using, you know, she does paintings or, you know, um, with uh, textiles um, using, um, you know, she creates her own colors. The same way uh, a traditional art maker like Sadhananda, she does his murals, he use uh, mediums you know, he creates his own mediums with colors. So similarly, I think, you know, like what you want to do, in, like, are you, do you want, are you, are you a designer or you, are you a painter or a sculptor? You know, if you are, are a painter, you know, like you have to be, I wanted to stay here. And you know, I've been observing many painters nowadays, you know, while researching. So many times I feel that these painters are trying to build, trying to create the sculptures within the space itself. So a painter is trying to make a sculpture, the space itself. It's actually a wrong way of doing it. Painting should be painterly. Painting should be fluid. Painting should be natural. You know, 
you don't need to make a drawing out of painting you know a drawing should be drawing as i said in the beginning and a line is a line you know the same way painter painting should be painterly so you you see some people are very much familiar with very much uh, you know happy to use oil color they are very good at it some people are not at all good with that medium so leave that aside you know you, what what finally you wanted to show is your content your what what are you going to show to the public or you know what are you going to show to the uh, in an exhibition space or you know these things are you know while you are painting you don't need to think about it but if it is a site specific work you really need to think about it so in contemporary art making there are collective nature of art making there are so many friends come together and make art or the idea has been created by someone else you you make your you bring out your idea the, the conceptually and you know someone else can execute it for you so this kind of there are many ways of looking at it so the medium is you have to find out what is what is your comfort you know like comfort also you should make you should try out everything possible but don't get confused of everything you know so deleting as a student as an editor you know like i would say that an artist is a curator artist is an editor artist needs to know what is to be eliminated what is to be removed what is to be erased okay there are two ways you can do things you know so i think one is other way is to adding things <laughs> so i think one of the biggest message that has gone out today to the students is that uh, they may come to the university to specialize in one particular field and get a piece of paper like a degree in photography or architecture or or graphic design but the idea is to open their aesthetics to everything that's there and and this this session is a testimony to that well we have so many questions but i'll only have time for a couple of questions before i invite the dean to give us word of thanks uh salamat malam to the students in indonesia if you have any questions uh, please feel free to write in or uh, raise your hand we have students from uh, design school art and design from itb indonesia uh, meanwhile i'll invite my colleague ritesh ranjan to ask a question ritesh has a very interesting question ritesh uh i've just unmuted you yes so, sir yeah go ahead yeah good evening sir so so basically i i, I just wanted to ask a question on behalf of my students like uh, both sir has uh, spoken many times both sir has spoken about uh, socio political engagements of a budding artist or or the artist itself so how uh, like uh, in the, this time like uh, we all are aware about the <clears throat> surveillance or or the uh, different kind of uh, screenings different kind of uh, things are happening how this budding artist can be engaged in uh, socio politically charged artworks or how how they can react with their surroundings as the human being not as an artist it's an important uh, important question and i think you know you should start from the beginning of your life itself i would say that you are really late in a way if you are 17 you are late actually daily daily uh it's important daily reading daily um, newspaper at least in newspaper nowadays you cannot trust even newspapers you know <laughs> uh, everybody got their own agenda right you know every political parties they got their own agenda the um, but it is important to know what is history how our nation is been built uh, you know what was the nationalism you know i don't want to go on talking about how you can be conscious about it i think it is it has to be it you know like you are late i would say if you are 17 if you are 20 you are 20 years late as soon as you born you you born in this society you born in this place you need to know from your parents you need to know what are they um, how they are you know you know you you also should be you, you should be aware of economy as well you know uh, it, it's not only political it is very much connected to politics as well you know economy is also very much you know, uh, very much close to the political uh, thing so nothing cannot be separated from everything. i think everything you need to sensitize yourself intellectually and for that reason you need to have the practice of being practices of sketching practices of learning from others as well there are political figures talk about you know like 
but you know the history also helps you through reading through reading you are you are also building your uh, you are also transforming your imageries about um, certain things you know you, uh, when you read about gandhi when you read about uh, the period in the 40s uh, that that nationalism was different than present nationalism so you can also have a comparative study of uh, how you know is it is it important to be uh, a nationalist is it important to be a socialist is it important to be a communist is it important to be a good human being so all this is all connected you know like uh, some people you know i am a leftian thinker that's my personal perception and know why i am a leftian i believe in sharing i believe in uh, equality i believe in those kind of things i am a lover of uh, people i i believe that artist needs to be a good human being i think you know your answer i cannot give it to you in i think you know your self enlightenment is very important through with the help of uh, help of history help of your work yeah thank you sir i think uh, by the end of the session uh, there is going to be a lot of pondering and thought provoking ideas going to come into the people's head you should uh, you know like kids should have you know they should try <laughs> yes i mean like i have seen you know my colleagues you know i had 35 students in my class when i was doing my uh, bachelor's degree and uh, i don't know about my 33 friends you know other other two of them i know they are in the art world but you know, left i don't know other other 33 okay. you know i think you know um, it is important that um everybody uh, is an artist you know everybody is an artist but um, but I, the artist that is uh, you know like uh, joseph boys said you know, joseph boys is a great artist a performance artist joseph boys um a german artist everyone could be um you know everyone could be an artist but that's that's lots of work no be yourself uh yes sir and like in one of your slides before every school every institution institution should be an art school and i think that's what we aim to pursue and talking of art school i have our dean for the department of fine arts professor dr uh, ranjan k malik who is also an accomplished artist himself uh he's here uh, joining us now to express his gratitude towards uh you for taking your time out and presenting such a beautiful topic in a most amazing way uh, over you to so you much, professor uh, dr ranjit malik thank you rajesh thank you uh, mr rajesh uh, thank you sir uh, so much it is a great pleasure to listen you sir i hope it will help to our budding students and our art and design uh, faculties uh, in many different ways in future we will uh, expect you uh, actually we are exactly expecting you in our beautiful uh, campus in chitkara university so we hope uh, ke through both your organizations and our uh, chitkara design school will uh, do in uh, many uh, any project any exhibitions and talk many more uh, so thank you so much uh, from our heart uh, design school thank you so much thank you sir thank you, thank you all of thank you mr rajesh thank you all listeners thank you thank you dr ranjan uh bo sir i i think you started your presentation with a slide with the visual of shanti niketan and at, i cannot think of a better quote than this that what uh, rabindranath tagore said yes exactly uh the nobel laureate from india for literature he said that you know it is uh well it is simple to be happy but it is very difficult to be simple and your session today teaches exactly that that aesthetics is not rocket science it's a very simple thing you just need to put in your mind into practice and observation and everything will fall into place so it has been an amazing session and uh, could i please uh, take one promise from you that whenever you find time you should please visit us in the campus uh, sure but at the same time i would like to i would like to discuss the word of the kuchin dinale ko dinale foundation work and you know like you sure your students should must visit 
um, location, a festival of thinking, festival of art, festival of visuals, everything. I've shown you a little bit of about the biennial and uh, your support, the people's support, people make everything beautiful, isn't it? You know? Absolutely. People, people create art, people create sight, people create a better world. So I'd love to, love to see all of you. Thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Ranjan. And thank you again to all our, especially I talk to students, you know, I don't need to talk to, you know, uh, you know experienced people, but this is my ways of sharing. I think, you know, sharing is one of the most important thing in life. And uh, as you said, that minimalism, how you can bring into, uh, take your life into a very minimalistic manner, but understanding, without understanding the chaos, you cannot make order. So you go through the fire, you become, you know, uh, uh, you become the light. Only you can find the, you know, light within the darkness, isn't it? The stars are always in darker spaces, you know. Stars will be much more visible when it's dark, right? So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And I, I promise on that note, that at the first opportunity that we get, uh, some of our faculty members and our students are definitely going to visit the Kochi Muziris Pinale, and that is for sure. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you to Thank all the participants who have joined in today, and uh, we'll be sharing the recording very soon. Stay safe. Uh, keep yourself and your family safe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.